again. This video is going to cover how to use Affinity Publisher to data merge documents, which on first thought you might think, what's that got to do with publishing? However, if you create books like uh, Bible prompts for journals or creative writing prompts for journals or similar types of um, documents where you're perhaps copying and pasting into the, the main book, then data merge will be really, really helpful for you. If you're new to my channel, my name's Jane Willingale of Silver Zone Printables, and I create videos for this channel based on low content publishing and printables for Etsy or similar platforms. And if that kind of thing interests you, then please click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. And if you find this video helpful, then please do click on the like button, which will help this video get seen and help me grow this channel. I really do appreciate it. So I mentioned data merge and I'm going to just guide you through the steps to use it um, as a simple merge for a document that I will create for creative writing prompts. So I'll start off with a um, brand new document based on one of the presets and we'll just use the letter portrait setup. And I don't want the pages to be facing because it's just easier to see what's going on. So we will turn that bit off as well. OK, so the things you're going to need to use the data merge, you will need a, a Excel spreadsheet or similar type of data document. And you can use text files, which is separated by commas or semicolons. But an Excel spreadsheet is probably the simplest route to go, and that's what I'll be using. You also need to have the data merge tools open. So we've got our document and the other thing we're going to open up now is the data merge section, which is here. So under document, you have data merge manager, which has um, been new since last year, I believe. I did briefly see that at the time I was producing my course, but hadn't had enough time to go through it then and wasn't actually sure what the relevance would be until I'd explored it. Now I have and I can see there will be uses within the uh, low content publishing. So we've opened up the data merge tool and it opened up off screen. So I'll just pull that back in. And at the moment, there's nothing in here because we haven't associated any data document with it. The first thing we need to do is go down here in the left hand corner. And if you hover over that, you see it says add data merge source. So it's taken me to where I need to go for the creative writing prompts. And I'm going to click on that Excel file, which you will see has already got one field in it or one column in it of prompts. And it has a sheet which is just called sheet one. There are no other sheets in it. So we will open that and it will attach it to the data merge um, manager section. And then this bit down here becomes populated with what you don't need to add so much in there as just so you can um, review the information as it comes up. This first section is probably the most important in that whatever you do in this Excel spreadsheet, uh, once you've added it to your publisher file, if you do anything in there, you will then need to come back here and update it. And I will just uh, do that now so I can show you what happens. So I've clicked across to my Excel spreadsheet and I'm going to rename the sheet and just call it creative writing and save that in the Excel file. OK, so if we now go back to Publisher, and if we click on update, you will see this bit change. There you go. It's now updated that sheet tab to creative writing. So it is a reminder that anything you do within the Excel sheet, you will need to update here first if you want it to reflect through to your data merge file. 
you can click on show which will tell you where the folder is so where the file is that you're going to use and you can click on select to select a data file you could also add more than one data file so if for example i was going to use these creative writing prompts from one excel spreadsheet but i wanted to use say uh, authors or images from another excel spreadsheet i can add it in here and you go back down here to the bottom and add another data merge source So I have uh, 1184 records in my prompt spreadsheet, which I'm certainly not going to use. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know. So uh, oh, that's just telling me how many lines there are, how many records there are and how many I could use if I wanted to. In the next section in the filter, which is fairly primitive, this also tells me I can go from one to 1184, but I can also choose a range. So I'm only going to use the first 100. And if I type that in there, that will make sure that I only have 100. In fact, I'll do less than that because it will take less time. Uh, we'll have uh, 30. And in the preview section, if you tick on tick the preview with the record, we would be able to see once we've set up the data, um, a record listed here. So you better see what it looks like. We can't do that yet because we haven't set up the fields. And then you'll tick merge enabled to allow you to merge all of them or the range that you have chosen. So we will change that to 30 as well. And we will put that to one side for now because initially we have to set up the field within the document and we also have to set up the layout on the page. So I'll just take that out of the way. We go to the master pages and I'm just going to set up a simple lined page and to do that I will just set up a, a quick table of about 20 lines with just one column and I will take off the edge borders by clicking on the table formatting take that off and I will just um, take off the outside borders of the lines here by clicking up here on the table formatting button choosing the outside borders here and making sure that is switched off and close that down and I think I will also take the rest of it down so that it is a grey rather than a black. So about 75% that will do. Okay, so now we have a lined section. Next thing to do is to create a text frame at the top. So we'll use the text tool. Draw a frame and since I know that the file I'm adding has some quite large groups of text I'm going to make that quite deep and put in uh, just a word as a holder for the time being I'll center that and I'll give it a slightly nicer font remember that although it's tempting to put in a really fancy script font sometimes they're quite hard to read when you have large amounts of text if you've just got one or two words it's not so bad but it's quite um, difficult to read some of the fancy text in uh, groups of, you know, large groups of uh, words. So we'll have something uh, relatively easy to read, I think, make it bigger and about uh, 18. That will do. OK, that's the master page all set up. And remember, you can add in page numbers as well if you wish. Uh, you'd add that down the bottom in another text frame like so. And then you would go to text, insert, fields and page number, which will then put in a holder down here, center that and I will just zoom in so you can see what I've done. Okay, that puts a hashtag in and that, that's your holder for page numbers. 
Okay, so that's the master page set up. We will now go into the main document and into the text frame field. And here we're going to add in the field that will designate the text that needs to go into this text frame. And again, we'll go to text and insert fields. And you should be able to see more down the bottom here. You click on that. That then brings up any fields associated with the document that is attached to this data merge file. And if you scroll down the bottom of this section, you will see the data merge information and the field prompt. If you double click on that, it exchanges what I highlighted in the text frame field for that field name. Okay. We can leave that to one side. We don't need to do any more in there. These You can add all this other information in if you wanted to. So it would give you a constant update of when it was last updated, when it was last, um, when, when things were last added to it. But you don't need that in. And for all on, in all honesty, for low content books, you don't really want that kind of information in there anyway. Right, so now we have the correct field in the right text frame. Uh, we'll just close the field section down as we don't need that. Next, we need to open up the data manager, sorry, the data merge manager again. So we go to document, data merge manager. And once again, that's opened it off page. So I'll bring it back in. And now uh, we are going to um, remind that that it's only 30 and again change that to 30. We will click update just to make sure because it's defaulting on the sheet and I want to make sure that it is choosing the right document. There we go, updated to creative writing. And then we will click generate. Uh, and that needs to be 30. That does change. If you change anything up here, that will change as well. So everything needs to be double checked before you generate your merge document. And you can always regenerate, of course. So if we click generate, and we'll just move that out of the way for now, you'll now see that I have a 30 page document and each page has, this has a title because I had a title field, so we can ignore that one. But each page has a field with a prompt on it, ready for somebody to start writing underneath. This is not perhaps the ideal um, merge data to use, but this is just an example to show you what can be done. And you can go in and change these and edit them if you want to change the text at all. You can shorten them. You can change the, the font, though probably the easiest way to do that is to go up to the master and change it in the master. The, this is a new document, by the way. It doesn't do it within the original merge file. It creates a document which you can then resave under a new name. Add a title page, add a cover page and a back page, and you have a new document. So whilst it's true, you can also do this in uh, Word and in PowerPoint if you have those um, if you have that software and prefer to use it. But as this is about Publisher, I have chosen to use Publisher. I find it much more stable than Word. One last thing to mention is that you can obviously tidy this up a great deal by adding images into it. So one of the things you could do is if you've got stock open, and, and if you haven't, you can view that under the uh, studio and select stock. You could find an image that will fit as a background. And uh, if I just scroll down here, I switched across to Pexels for a better selection. And I think this one will work quite well. 
so I've pulled this in now this may not be a copyright free image and I'm, I'm only showing you this to show you what you can also do you do need to check the copyrights and make sure you have um, full usage for this kind of thing uh, you would go to the layers panel move that image to the back by dragging it to the bottom and I would also take the opacity down so that it becomes just a, a background image there and this is all done on the master page okay now that will now appear on all the main pages of the document so use your imagination there decide on your type of image you want to portray as to what kind of picture you want in the background if any at all whether you just have a, a board around or something like that to create a bit more interest and a bit more originality to your document. I hope you find this a useful addition to your arsenal for low content publishing and I'll be interested to know what other kinds of documents you can produce using this same feature. My name is Jane Willingale of Silver Zone Principles. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting my channel. See you next time. <music>